Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the three-phase AC circuits. Today's topic is three-phase balanced to delta connected load. In the previous class, we have seen that three-phase balanced star connected load. Today we will see three-phase balanced delta connected load. This is the diagram, the three-phase balanced to delta connected load. This all the impedances, JDA, ZB, ZC are connected in the form of delta. That's why it is called as delta connected load. So if you see the, all the parameters in the diagram, so if you see that A, B, C are the three terminals. Okay, simply we can say the three phases. Here, the voltage across the phase A is VA and voltage across the phase B is VB and voltage across the phase C is VC. So VA, VB, VC are the three voltages. So here, yes, equally all are equal in magnitude because it is a balanced delta connected load. VA is equal to VB and VB is equal to VC. Okay, these, uh, these voltages are called as the phase voltages. Now, what is line voltage? Line voltage is the, the voltage between any two phases. The voltage between VA and VB is called as phase voltage VAB. Okay, the voltage between voltage A and phase voltage B is called as VAB. VAB is called as a line voltage. Next, if we take the line voltage VBC, it is the voltage between VB and VC is called as VBC is called as a line voltage. It is in between the phase voltage B and phase voltage C. Now, if you see the VCA, VC is called a one of the line voltage. It is a in between the line voltage, uh, sorry, phase voltage C and phase voltage A. In between the phase A and phase C, there is a line voltage. That is that line voltage is called as VCA. Simply line voltage is nothing but the voltage between any two phases is called as line voltage. If you take the phase A and phase B voltages in between, there is a line voltage that is called as VAB. The voltage between phase B and phase C is called as line voltage VBC. And the phase voltage between C and A is called as the line voltage VCA. The voltage between any two phases is called as line voltages. So, so here VAB, VBC, VC are called as the line voltages. Now, if you see the now phase current, see here the IAB is a current flowing to A to B. Next, IBC is a current flowing to B to C. And ICA is a current flowing to C to A. So IAB, IBC and ICA, these are all called as the phase currents because the current flowing through the phases. Now, IA, IB, IC are called as a line currents. IA, IB, IC are called as a line currents. Okay. The current passing through the phase, each and every phase is IAB, IBC, ICA. That's why these are all called as the phase currents. IA, IB, IC are called as a line currents. Okay. So this is, this is about the each and every parameter of the three phase balance star connected load diagram. Okay. Now, We'll see by using the phasor diagram, what is the relationship between line current and phase current and line voltage and phase voltage. Okay. Now, from this diagram, we can say directly that, see here, it is the line voltage VAB. Okay. So, in between, there is no elements here. In between, this is the phase voltage and this is the line voltage. Okay, VA is called as the phase voltage and VAB is called as a line voltage. So if we take the these two voltages, line voltage and phase voltage, in between there is no element, there is no drop in the voltage. If there is any wind resistor inductor capacitor, there is a drop, there is a chance of dropping the voltage. So here, yeah, if you see the diagram, there is no other elements here. So from this we can say directly that this line voltage is exactly equal to the phase voltage. Okay, from the diagram, we can say that directly line voltage V line is equal to V phase. VAB is called as a line voltage and VA is called as a phase voltage. These both are equal because there is no drop in the middle. Okay, now if we apply the KCL at node A, now we will derive the relationship between line current and the phase current. The line voltage phase voltage relation we got that is both are equal. Now we will derive the relationship between line current and the phase current. If we apply KCL at node A, for this node A, IA current is entering and ICA current is entering. That's why IA plus ICA is equal to what is the leaving current from this node? IAB is the leaving. Okay, so if we uh, rearrange this, we will get IAB 
minus ICA is equal to IA. Take minus ICA to this right hand side, we will get IAB minus ICA is equal to IA. This is equation number one. So IAB, ICA are called as the phase current and IA is called as the line current. Okay, now if we apply KCL at node B, observe clearly for this node, how which currents are entering? IB current is entering and IAB is current is entering to this node. That's why IB plus IAB are the entering currents and IBC is the leaving. So IBC is leaving. So entering currents is equal to leaving currents according to KCL. If you rearrange the our equation, we will get IBC minus IAB is equal to IB. This is equation number two. Okay. Now, if we apply the KCL at node C, for this node C, how many currents are entering here? Two currents are entering. What are those IC current is entering into the node C? And IBC is the current entering into the node C. But ICA current is leaving from this node C. That's why entering currents is equal to leaving currents. IC plus IBC is equal to ICA. So, if we simplify the above equation, so we will get I see I am taking all the line currents to the left hand side and the uh, phase currents to the left hand side and line current to the right hand side. IECEA minus IBC is equal to IC. This is equation number three. Okay, just I am applying KCL, not more than that here and rearranging the uh, line currents and the phase, phase currents. Line currents to the one side and the phase currents to the other side. Now, by using these equations, we will see how we will get the phasor diagram. So, this is the general phasor diagram of the three phase system. Okay, now this is the phase current A, B, and this is the IBC phase current, and this is the ICA is the phase current. From each, each and every phase current, there is a 120 degrees phase difference. Now, this is the by using this reference phasor diagram. Now, we will apply the what are the equations we got in the equation number 1, 2, 3 that we will apply here and we will get the resultant phasor diagram. So, from the equation number 1, we got IAB minus ICA is equal to IA. Okay, this we will apply in the phasor diagram. So, now if we apply that, we will get here IAB is called as the phase current and IBC is called as the one more phase current. There is a 120 degrees phase shift and ICA. ICA is called as the phase that is also phase current and there is a 120 degrees phase shift between this phase to this phase. But here we want IAB and minus ICA but we, we have IAB but we don't have minus ICA. Where we will get minus ICA if we take the ICA this is the ICA for this if we take the imaginary line we will get minus ICA. So we have IAB and minus ICA. The resultant is what here IA. So this is the resultant. IAB and minus ICA. Resultant is VA. If we extend that line, we will get the parallelogram one. So this is the resultant phasor diagram of this equation number one. So from IAB is a one phase current. IBC is the one more phase current. The phase angle between these two phases is 120 degrees. It exactly at the middle, what is the phase angle? 60 degrees. So that's why the phase angle between IAB and minus ICA is 60 degrees. Is it clear? Now, if we derive the relationship between this line current and the phase currents, we will get by using the parallelogram equation. This diagram is looking like a parallelogram. So I am applying here. IA is equal to under root of IAB square plus minus ICA square plus 2 IAB into minus ICA cos pi. Cos pi is equal to 60 degrees. So here IAB square minus ICA square plus 2 IAB plus into minus ICA cos pi. Cos pi is 60 degrees. So here all the phase currents equal in magnitude. That's why instead of ICA, I will take IAB only. Here IAB square plus instead of minus ICA, I will take IAB from this condition plus 2 into IAB as it is and instead of minus ICA, I will take IAB into cos 60 is 1 by 2. Okay, here 1 by 2, uh, sorry, 1 by 2 and these two both are get cancelled. Here, if you see that uh, in the root, IAB square plus IAB square, it is 2 into IAB whole square plus 2 into IAB into IAB, IAB square. So finally, we will get 3 into IAB whole square. Here, square and root both are will get cancelled. We will get IA is equal to root 3 times of IAB. 
So in the starting, in the while discussing about the diagram, so just uh, we have seen that IA is called as the line current and IAB is called as phase current. From this, we can say that line current is equal to root three times of phase current. In a three phase balanced delta connected load, line current is root three times of phase current. Okay, now if we combine all the equations, so we have derived the uh, relationship between line current and uh, phase current by taking equation number one. Now we will combine all the three equations, how the phasor diagram we will get, we'll see. So this is the phasor diagram we will get here. This is IAB is a one phase, IBC, IBC is called as a one more phase and ICA is called as one more phase. Okay, the phase angle between each and every phase is 120 degrees. So here, yeah, this is 120 degrees and it is 120 degrees and it is a 120 degrees. Okay, so here in the equations, we need minus ICA and minus IAB and minus IBC. And we don't have minus ICA, minus IAB, minus IBC. That's why here we have ICA. To get the minus ICA, I am drawing one imaginary line and getting minus ic and we have ibc and we don't have minus ibc so to, to get minus ibc i am drawing one imaginary line and we are we will get minus ibc okay next we have iab here but we don't have minus iab so if we draw the imaginary line we will get a minus iab here this is minus iab okay now i am applying equation number one here what is equation number one iab minus ica IAB minus ICA. What is the resultant IA? So this is about the equation number one. Okay, next. We will apply the equation number two. So if you apply the equation number two here, IBC minus IBC minus IAB. Okay, this is IBC and it is minus IAB. What is the resultant here? IB. This is the resultant phasor of equation number two. Now, if we apply the equation number three, equation number three is equal to ICA. This is ICA and minus IBC. This is minus IBC. What is the resultant here? IC. This is the resultant phasor diagram in equation number three. So, if we combine all the three equations, we will get the resultant phasor diagram like this. Okay, this is about the total resultant phasor diagram of three phase balanced delta connected load. So up to now what we have to find. So we find that line voltage and phase voltage both are equal. Okay, from the starting diagram only we have concluded that both are equal in magnitude that is a line current and both current both are equal. So from the phasor diagram we have derived that line current is equal to root three times of phase current. And we know the power formula, this power formula in terms of the phase voltage and the phase current. 3 into V phase, I phase, cos pi. Now, we know that line current, phase current both are equal. So, I can replace I phase with I line. But I phase is equal to what here? I phase is equal to I line by root 3. That I have to substitute here. 3 into, in, in place of V phase, I will substitute directly I line because both are equal. Now, in place of I, I phase, I am substituting I line by root 3 here. I line divided by root 3 will become I phase. Cos phase is as it is. Now, now I can write 3 to the root 3 into root 3. Here, root 3 into root 3. 3 I am writing as a root 3 into root 3 and remaining terms of as it is. Here, root 3, root 3 get cancelled. Finally, we will get power is equal to root 3 into V line, I line, cos pi. So, this is the power equation in terms of line voltage and line current. And this is the power equation in terms of phase voltage and phase currents. So, this is the total, all the parameters and the relationships of voltages, currents, and power relationship of three-phase balance to delta connected load. So this is about the today's session. In the next class, we will discuss about the remaining topics of the three-phase AC circuits.